Smith for your five minutes of questions. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, innovation and in medical research has been a priority of mine since I arrived in Congress. I believe there's a role for both federal government and the private sector in this space, and that Congress has a responsibility to fund these activities. My line of questions that was originally written out said, okay, tell me why we need a new agency, let me get my head around this. Uh, you all have answered those questions to a certain extent already, so I'm not gonna be redundant on, on this occasion. Uh, but Dr. Ling, you, you, you caught my imagination and, and the spirit of trying to create something new and different. And you said, you know, if we're trying to build, and, and you used the, the baseball analogy, if we're trying to get to the World Series, we might like that person a whole lot, but if they're not getting the job done, if they're not performing, we should fire them. But firing people is very difficult at the federal level, as you know. So I'm interpreting, and I want you to confirm yes or no if you agree, I'm interpreting that you think when we pass this legislation, we need to have specific language on if they're not meeting the requirements of their particular contract, that that contract will be terminated and they will be fired. Is that correct? Did I understand you? Mike, so that everybody in the world can hear you. Correct, Congressman. In DARPA, there is a phrase. It says, at any time, for any reason, without prior notice, this contract may be terminated at the decision and of the United States government. And I appreciate that, and, and uh, uh, Ranking Member Kathy McMorris Rogers pointed out, okay, well, what are we talking about with accountability? We need to have some accountability language in there as well, not just for the executive branch, but also for the congressional branch. Would you agree with that as well, Dr. Lang? There needs to be accountability throughout the system, exactly, Congressman. And that would be both executive branch and to the Congress of the United States? Absolutely, and all the way down to the performer level. They need to feel accountable. So this is not their money, it's a taxpayer money. And we're trying to make sure we get big things done. And if we're gonna create a whole new agency inside of our NIH or inside of whatever we're going, wherever we're gonna put it, we need to make sure that they're performing and getting that research done for the American people. I appreciate that very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Jar, um, I, I know you said some good things about the NIH, and I agree. I'm, I'm involved in some stuff with the NIH. I think they do a great job in their lane and so forth. But one of the concerns we've had of late is it appears that through third-party contractors, there is a lot of money being funneled to China. Uh, do you think that we can stop that with ARPA-H, and should we put some specific language in there that this research needs to be done on American soil. Um, th thank you for thank you for that. Um, it, you know, I do believe that the NIH investigators do need to. Well, the NIH program managers, the NIH offices, do need to be more accountable. In general, if you're an NIH grantee, you get your grant, you put a report together at the end of a year, you send it in, and that's it. And you really don't become accountable until every five years when that's renewed. Contrast that to DARPA, where literally every week the program manager is reviewing the performer. Every month the office director is reviewing all the programs, and every year the director reviews every single. I can also say that when I was at DARPA, to your staff uh, and the appropriation staff or, uh, from the defense side, I briefed every single program in my office what they were doing and what they were accountable for. That's the degree of transparency and accountability. So yes, I agree. I do believe the NIH needs to raise the accountability, particularly for overseas investigators without being burdensome on U.S. investigators. But ARPA-H will be accountable at every level and transparent. That's the nature of the beast. One of the frustrations that I've had is in trying to figure out what was going on at the Wuhan lab with American money was getting answers, and they won't give us answers. And the Chinese, I never expect to get answers from the, uh, from the Chinese. And so that creates a problem. If we're gonna spend this money, Dr. Miller, you said, you know, the Chinese are ahead of us on research. They've got all these extra people doing research and that the United States needs to catch up and we need to be doing this research too. What's the point of putting this money into ARPA-H or anything else if we're then just gonna subcontract with the Chinese? Don't you think we ought to be doing that here in the United States? I agree wholeheartedly. That's what I like, a short, quick answer. Uh, do you? <laughs> uh, and so we'd be a whole lot better off if we were doing that. And then if there is some kind of a, a question of accountability, you would agree, Dr. Miller and, and both, and Dr. Ling, it's a whole lot easier to get it if we're dealing with people who are in this country and who are answering to us directly as opposed to 
a, a government that does not have any reason to show us anything or give us any information. Yes. Dr. Ling? We should only be working with trusted allies and, of course, United States citizenry. That's exactly what it should be. Well, and I would say I think it needs to be mostly American. I suppose if we had a trusted ally that we could actually trust, but when we can't get answers uh, on what happened at Wuhan with American money, I have serious problems about expanding any program that doesn't have language to protect us. I yield back. Gentleman yields back.